Welcome to this video where I will show you how to create feathers and plumage using the Nuja tools in Blender 3.4. We will start with the Feather Generator tool. The Feather tool is composed of a rig with many bones and a curved object with a geometry node modifier with many parameters. We are going to start by shaping the feather using the bones. I prefer to turn on the x-axis symmetry when giving the feather its rough shape. As you can see, the profile of the barb can be shaped with the side arrows. You can move them, rotate them, and scale them. The circular arrows on the bottom and the top of the rig allows you to tilt the profile of the feather. The small yellow arrows are here to bend the barb's profile. Starting to look like something but our feather is still looking a bit flat. Let's bend it using the red arrows. Let's also give a bump to the barbs using the yellow arrows again. Nice! Now let's move on to the side controls. First, the purple icon controls the splits. You can add splits and tweak their amplitude by going to the Geometry Node panel. You can add randomness to the barbs with the orange icon. The top and bottom arrows are here to help you select the zone you want the randomness to affect. Then, the randomness amplitude can be tuned by going to the Geometry Node panel. Finally, the blue icon. This one allows you to add noise and puff if necessary. To enable puff, simply go to the geometry node panel and set the parameter to 1. Be careful though, if you want to use this feather for a complex plumage, it can slow down your computer quite a bit. I'd recommend you leave it on a zero for basic feathers. And that's it for the Feather Generator tool. As you can see, there's a lot of parameters on the Geonode panel, so have fun and play with them. Quick disclaimer regarding the Rashi barbs and barbules diameters controls. In the viewport and EV, you'll only see one global diameter displayed for every part of the feather. That's a current limitation of Blender that only displays different curves diameters in cycles. Let's move on to the Feather instance. This curves object has a Geonode modifier that references the feather we just created with the new Rig. With it, you can override the feather material and its pivot point. So for example, if you want to have the same feather with different materials, just duplicate it and change the material in the control panel. If at any point you want to change the shape of your feather, just go back to the rig and tweak it. Finally, if you want to go destructive, just duplicate your feather again so that you have a backup and apply the Geonode modifier. When it's done, go to the sculpt mode and comb the barbs as you like for extra details. Just be careful not to comb the rashi because the barbs won't follow its deformation. Let's finally tackle the plumage tool. It's basically a geonode modifier that you attach to an empty curves object. So, let's add a Susan mesh to our scene and make it birdie. Before anything, you must UV unwrap your model. This step is mandatory to any mesh you want to add plumage to. 
Now that this is done, select your mesh, Shift A, and add an empty air object. Now go to the Modifier tab and add a Geometry Node modifier. Click on the drop down menu and select Nuja Plumage. As you can see, a few parameters have appeared. Before continuing, you must select a target mesh for your plumage and the feather you want your plumage to be made of. In our case, let's select Suzanne for the target mesh. As for the plumage object, let's select the feather instance we previously created. Now everything is set up so we can start painting our plumage. For good measure, let's rename our curves object to plumage. You can now select the plumage object and go to sculpt mode. Now click on the add brush and in the brush parameters, set the points to curve option to three. This will help a bit for performances. We can now paint our plumage. Now, as you can see, the default orientation of the feathers is pointing outwards in an unorganized way. To give them direction, just select the comb brush and start, well, combing your plumage. You can see that the feathers auto-align themselves to Suzanne's normal and won't clip through the mesh. That's thanks to our geometry node modifier. You can also scale down the feathers using the Grow Shrink brush to add variation and realism to your plumage. When you're satisfied with the result, go back to the object mode and go to the modifier tab. Under our GeoNode modifier, you have a wind section. Crank up the amplitude parameters and press play. You can now see the effect of our procedural wind. Once again, just play with the other parameters to achieve the result you want. And that's it for the Nutja functionality. If you have any question, just ask in the comment section and I will gladly answer. The product is available on the Blender Market and Gumroad. You can also purchase my feather pack composed of 150 feathers and 25 procedural materials. Have a nice day. I'll see you soon.